Chiron. I was just talking, this by the way is Andy Wallace. Um, how would you uh, explain what your role is? Potentially one of the best jobs in the world. <laughs> it certainly can be. Well, I'm, uh, I take customers for a ride, uh, show them uh -huh. animal work, same with media, uh, yep. and give VIP rides. And basically I continue my life, which is my life without having a proper job. And how many miles have you done in the Chiron? I've now done over so 70,000 kilometers in the 70, Chiron. 70,000, okay. And I'll tell you what, it never gets old. <laughs> I can imagine. It so the significance of this moment for me is hard to quantify in words. We are about to go up a, a famous road in Abu Dhabi called uh, Jebel Hafeet. But on our way there, what I want to do is try and put into context why this car is so special. Almost sort of quantify as to why the car is so expensive from an engineering point of view. Because I think um, we read these stats and figures about 0 to 60 times and top speeds, all nice and good, but how that's achieved is a totally different ball game. Things like the centrifugal force. Let's start with that because that, for me, is such a small detail that almost highlights everything about this car. Well, so the further you get away from the center of the wheel, further out towards the edge of the wheel, the G increases. Mm. The forces on the wheel and the tire increase. They also go up as a square of the speed. Right. So at 420, which is our um, electronically limited top speed, uh -huh. the valve cap, which weighs two and a half grams, is subjected to 3,000 times gravity, so it weighs seven and a half kilos, trying to escape from the center line of the tire, or the center of the wheel. The um, t temperature and pressure sensor weighs yeah. 44 grams, which by the way is a very lightweight one. I'm sure it is, yeah. Uh, and with the forces acting on that, that's 132 kilos. 132 kilos and that's obviously when you're going that kind of speed it's very important that those things work. I understand from when they did the early testing uh -huh. that we were using a, a fairly standard uh, temperature and pressure sensor that is used in most normal cars Okay. and on Michelin's rig we were finding that actually they were snapping loose. They were out, snapping loose. Yeah, and coming out through the top of the tyre. So it's just <laughs> little things like that, which yeah. everything about this car, it's breaking new ground in so many areas. Yeah. So of course, it was modified, um, a new one was designed uh, and engineered and put on the car. We have no such problems, but it's just to go to show you the forces. Now, that's at the valve. By the time you get to the tyre sidewall, we're asking the tyre sidewall to withstand 3,800G at that point. And this is at the limited 420. It's like but you're saying these figures as if it's just like, you know, 3,800. Like, that, that's like unfathomable force. It's just ridiculous. It really is, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. and this is why, of course, when you see a car doing, going for the world land speed record, they use solid metal discs and yeah. tyres. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's reason. just hit our first few corners. I know on paper this car isn't by convention light, but like freakishly it feels it. I mean, it, I assume you've got a very low center of gravity in this because it feels like it's flowing no problem at all. Yeah. Good God, the, the torque that's available is, it feels light, man. 
it, it does. And I think what's more important than the actual number of kilograms, yes. you can get fixated on that. Yes. It is, you're right, it's centre of gravity. Yeah. Um, actually, the centre of gravity on the Chiron is considerably lower. So, in uh, developing the engine, which is 90% or more new, yes. um, we've had to obviously make the bottom end of the engine quite a lot stronger. So, that's added weight. So, to get rid of the weight again, things like the inlet manifold is a, a totally composite piece now. Yes. And so we've taken wow. a lot of weight off the top of the engine. The engine weighs the same as it did in the Veyron, but okay. the CG is considerably lower. In terms of low down torque, I mean, I am feathering this throttle and we are, I feel like we're, we're actually being drawn along the road by more of a magnetic pull, actually. <laughs> it's got such effortless torque. It's an incredible feeling. And that's down to the two-stage turbocharging that we spoke about a bit earlier. Yes. Which is that we we use just two turbos early on. Here's a straight bit, see what you think. Right. It's astonishing, really. It's <laughs> astonishing. Yeah, it's <laughs> shouldn't be legal. What a what a piece of kit. <laughs> but yeah, with the two-stage turbocharger, you actually force all the exhaust gases from the 16 cylinders through only two turbochargers in the low RPM range and they spin up very quickly and then you let very the other two join the party later on. Wow. And the result is max torque from 2000 to 6000. The okay. brakes are like, again, everything about this thing, I, I, I know it shouldn't be, but everything about it's surprising. <laughs> Sensational, isn't it? Engine, on the outset, you'd be forgiven for thinking that it's a version of the Veyron engine because it's still the 8 litre W60, but of course that's not the case at all. What measures have taken place to get this thing to do what it does? Earlier on, you were talking to me about the consumption of air and the amount of fuel it drinks. Talk me through that, because again, insane. Yeah, and those are only the extremes. So when you're, what if you found a piece of road or you owned your own country and made your own piece of road and yeah. you could actually hold the throttle down for six minutes and 49 seconds at full speed, right. you would actually drain the 100 litre tank. But that's like a headline figure because yes. in fact, in normal use, you could easily clear 500 kilometers on a tank. Okay. But that uh, six minutes and 49 seconds, you've still traveled a distance of 56 kilometers because of the way you're covering the ground. So it's just, all these numbers are, are yeah. they're, they're so, problems that are not having to be solved by anybody else because sure. they're not, they haven't got the performance. I mean, one car that I've driven recently, this isn't something to compare at all, but it, this is going back to engineering again. Um, I just came back from the launch of the Audi RS4 and um, I was sort of hoping that they would have put a dual clutch gearbox in it. But because a gearbox at that price point, as a twin clutch, couldn't cope with the torque, they upped it for a more conventional eight-speed. Yeah. Now, how many how many pound speed of torque has this got? Eleven hundred and eighty. Eleven hundred and eighty over that whole two <laughs> to six thousand. And you're running a twin clutch gearbox. Now, this isn't to compare. This is to highlight just the magnificence of the engineering that's that's involved in this thing. I mean, like, how do you how do you go about making components that deal with that? Well, that's the thing, and I suppose it's it's expensive, isn't it? So, <laughs> yeah. if you're that's making it. a car that is going to be costing you a little bit more, you can put the engineering and the, and the costing yes. into it. Well, we're going to debrief in the car. Well, look at this resplendent Bentley that we've uh, had laid on for us to drive all the way back to Dubai. we got a chats link. We've got some stuff to be talking about. Thank you very much, sir. It's our wonderful driver team. Wow! Look at that for an interior. Debrief. Dude, how was that? Mate, it's, I mean, so my angle, as you, if you're at the end of the video now, it's easy to talk about how fast it is. Yep. I wanted to highlight the sort of engineering genius behind how it's so fast. Okay. Because it reaches this sort of realm of speed where all of a sudden everything is just magnified. Well, 3000 times. So Andy was giving me a stat that the uh, centrifugal g-force on the dust cap of okay. the tire um i think it weighs something like 2.4 grams when it's static yeah and it weighs like over seven kilograms when it's at top speed 
So he was saying the forces of everything are just so Ten magnified. Yeah, well, yeah. apparently it was 3,000 times. You know, that basically, at those sort of speeds, you can apply that formula to thousands of components on the car, yeah. which simply didn't exist. Like, they have to create and invent them. So the magnificent thing about it is, yes, it's like organ bendingly fast. Yeah. But the thing that I think I'm the most impressed with is how luxurious and refined it is doing it. Yeah. Like, there's cars which are as fast. But there's nothing. There's no But carpets, they're just stripped out. It's just and carbon, and it, that's it. it's just, yeah, shell. that's it. And it's a very different experience. I can't think of anything that does what that thing does. Like, well, we're in Bentley now, and the Chiron, the Chiron is, is, is as luxurious, if not more. Easy. Yeah, absolutely. Which kind of says, says it all, really, doesn't it? It, it, it feels what like you're car. in this, but it drives. It just like it drives like a proper supercar, but you kind of approach it like a. I actually call this thing a a, a hyper GT. Yeah, because, because it's so much miles luxury, to, easy. You could cruise in it no easily. You know, it's got a fabulous sound system in it, like plush leather. Um, they weren't in the game and it's to big. save weight. It's big. It's big. I'm, yeah, yeah. It's, like it's we a big said car. Before, I'm tall, and I got in it, and it, there's plenty of room in it. The way it like, the way it puts down traction, like flat, flat in first. It just squats and goes, and that's like that is deploying savage amounts of torque. Fifteen hundred brake horsepower. Fifteen hundred brake horsepower, and it, it, it just goes. And the rate at which it covers ground is quite scary. How was the braking compared to what you thought? Much when that better. air brake comes up, it it's like, like throwing it's, a parachute out behind it's you. Brilliant. It looks you fantastic. anchor on first, and obviously the brakes take the the, the first hit. But then when the, the air brake comes off, there is this like surge of a, a, a sort of depletion of energy upon this this brake coming up and it sheds off so much speed and obviously it, it, it has to. And it looks cool. And it looks amazing. <laughs> it looks yeah. I mean, this year has been ridiculous, but to be able to finish it with a Chiron, I hope you guys have on basically a, appreciated the content over the last 12 months. And hopefully it comes across on the, the tracking shots and yeah. some of the things we've done. The road that we've done it on. Yeah, amazing. So those tracking shots. is brilliant. I wish I'd have filmed you actually, because you were literally hanging out in the boot of a car. <laughs> Trying to get those shots. So, so thank Adam for those beautiful shots. Uh, comments below. Uh, this is a Christmas special, so happy Merry Christmas. Christmas and Happy New Year. Uh, and yeah, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Um, hand clap symbols for a round of applause for Adam getting some great tracking shots. And uh, yeah, who knows what 2018 will bring, but we have who some knows? stuff in the pipeline and uh, I have a feeling it's going to be quite epic. What a day. See you soon. Ciao.